All right, welcome back. Uh, been a bit of a gap uh, in this series, but uh, what I'm going to do is uh, upgrade my six-inch race, bu race build to RG Pilot 4.5 because uh, there's a bunch of new features in there that I've worked on that really help with uh, the tuning in particular. Um, and I'm going to show you how to uh, use those on, on, on well on my frame, but it uh, should work for you as well. And, and in particular, how you how you set up some of the settings. So let's get on with the show. Okay, so uh, I brought up the uh, mission planner uh, connected to the quad that you can see here, um, and really this is just to show you that uh, I've got. Uh, um, RG Pilot 454 running on it now. So all I did was uh, use Mission Planner to install 454. Um, the upgrade of the parameters happens automatically uh, and you should find that it flies just as well with 454 as it does with 44. Certainly I didn't have to uh, update um, uh, anything uh, to get it working. Uh, so uh, this um, particular video, I'm going to look at the notch filters. Now, if you remember from the tuning video, there was a tuning video and uh, I, I did, um, and about 10 minutes in, uh, I demonstrated the frame resonance that you could hear when you just uh, oscillated the copter up and down through, through hover throttle. And I used the um, uh, one of the harmonic notches, a fixed harmonic notch, to take out the frame resonance. Now uh, that works well, but it does use up a harmonic notch, uh, and it turns out that often with frame resonance, it's only really on one axis, and uh, so uh, and it affects the PIDs in particular. And so one of the features I implemented in 4.5 was the ability to set a fixed notch filter on a PID axis. Uh, so um, wh what I'll do is just show you how I measured that first and then show you the settings that are required to uh, set that all up. So let me bring up my uh, display. All right, so you can see my console here. And uh, what I'm using is this tool called mavfft underscore pid dot py. Uh, so this is available in PyMavLink. So let me just find my browser and show you that. Okay, here's my browser. And you can see that I'm on github.com and I'm in the RGPilot PyMavLink project. Uh, and PyMavLink is a bunch of tools for uh, using MavLink. And if I go into the tools directory here, you'll see there's MavFFT ISB, which is a tool to visualize an FFT on the batch sampler uh, updates. And uh, you can use this instead of the, the web tool uh, if you want, and you probably, if you've you watched any of my vid videos, you will have seen me using this. And then also there is this mavfftpid.py. And um, this allows you to run an FFT on the PID outputs. Uh, so if I switch back to my console, you can see my console here. So I'm running, so I cloned this GitHub repository, got hold of this script, it doesn't depend on anything and I'm running mavfft.py on a log file. Uh, and this is from my Badger build. Um, and you can see that it detected the sample rate, uh, which is the loop rate, uh, and it also extracted a bunch of data points. And if I show you the visualization of these, okay, so basically what it does is it, it does an FFT on the PIDs for roll pitch and your and you can see for your, it's not very interesting, you get this sort of nice smooth roll off um, in noise. Pitch is a bit more interesting, so there's a little bit, a uh, little 
few um, uh, nuggets of noise going on here, but not masses. But then roll is very interesting. So roll, you can see this quite big spike of noise at about 307 hertz, whatever. And um, interestingly, so it's not, so this red line is the target. So it's not, the noise is not in the target, but it is in the error, which means it comes through in P and D. So green is P, D is blue. Sorry, green is D, P is blue. Um, and you can also see a just sort of interesting side effect that the noise affects D a lot more than it affects P and that's that's quite common and that's why we have this filt D here. Um, but you can see the noise coming through on the error term here but not on the target term. So uh, okay so so this noise is frame resonance and this is what I was uh, hitting with the static harmonic notch, but with this new feature, I can use a PID notch to attenuate that. So let me show you how you do that. And just notice it's only on roll, not on pitch, not on your, which is very common in these resonant, with these resonance effects. So let me show you how you set up a notch to address this. Okay, so here are my parameters. And I'm first gonna look at the PID parameters for roll. So ATC rat roll. Okay, so here are the parameters for roll. And you can see I've got a D value and a um, P value. Uh, All right, a little bit of disquiet there on my part. So I was looking at the parameters for the log, which didn't have this feature. So that was why I was a little bit uh, concerned that I couldn't find the parameters I was looking for. But if I look on the actual vehicle, so here's Mission Planner parameters up for AC rat roll uh, for the for the actual copter. You can see that I've got the um, various filter settings, but then there's this mysterious. ATC rat roll NEF and NTF and so this is NEF is the notch error filter and NTF is the notch target filter so you can set a notch on both the error and the target and there are other applications where the target is useful but for my purposes um, I want to set the error the notch error filter so I've set that to one so one so this this value is the index number of the filter. So basically this means that I'm going to use notch filter number one. So there's, there's no settings here for notch filter number one. I'm just saying that I'm enabling this notch filter using notch filter number one. So to see notch filter number one, I have to go to the filt settings. Um, and if I look at uh, so this first of all, there is um, filt one. Uh, so there's, I think there's basically up to eight filters, and by default. So if I look at filt two, filt two is not enabled. Uh, it's all right. Filt three. Let's look at filt three. Uh, filt three is not. By default, you just get this type and zero means disabled, and one means enable it as a notch filter. So um, if I go back to filt one, you can see I've got filt one type set to one, and so that's enabled it as a notch filter. And then the other parameters are frequency, so frequency of the notch, um, and Attenuation of the notch, so I've got 180 is the frequency of the notch, attenuation of the notch is 40. And then this Q factor, so this is the quality factor of the notch. And you can think of this as the ratio of frequency to bandwidth. So normally we, we recommend that people, for 
basic notches people set the bandwidth as half the frequency that so the ratio of frequency to bandwidth is two and so if you want to get the same behavior you set the, the um, setting q to two if you want to get a narrow notch you make this value bigger if you want to get a wider notch you can make this value smaller although probably two is is, is a sort of good starting point uh, and you can also see that FILT2 is also enabled slightly different frequency, um, but uh, FILT1 is the one I'm using. Now, if you remember from um, the video, oh, sorry, from the log, the noise was about 307 hertz. Now, that's a very old um, log, and I subsequently did some more testing, and I think 180 was sort of where I ended up as, as sort of the best compromise. Um, noise wise so uh, basically that's it you enable the uh, um, NET value on on roll in fact we can look at all the NET values and score whoops sorry not NET NEF so you see there's one on roll so you see I've got one on pitch and one on roll not one on your um, and then you can actually put one on on the this PFC XZ value. Um, now the nice thing about these is that they can be targeted at slightly different frequencies, and that was the problem with the static harmonic notch was it was a single frequency, and you were basically stuck with it on all axes. So this is leaving you alone, targeting roll, targeting pitch with slightly different frequencies. So the pitch, the values for pitch are filled to. So just slightly, slightly lower frequency. And that's it. So when you uh, enable this type, you probably need to do a reboot to get the other parameters to appear. Um, but uh, apart from that, uh, it all looks good. So what I'll just do is quickly show you a later log, just so you can see what the output looks like. Okay, then here we go. So you can see I've run the tool again, mavft underscore pid dot pi on log 124, so a much later log. And here is are the results. So on your, nothing going on, you see a little bit more noise. This is dynamic flight, so a little bit more uh, noise. Um, but if we look at roll, you can see this big dip in error at 180 hertz, which is what we set it at. And that reflects in a big dip in um, pitch, uh, sorry, in P and D as well. Now you can still see there's this tiny little blip at 300 hertz, but I think when I was testing this in the end, I found that the, the noise here was sig significantly more than the noise here. And similarly on um, pitch, you can see, so we, here we've got the 175, and again, you can see the dip in the noise here, a bit of a cleaner, cleaner signal. Now, one word of caution here is that um, due to the joys of Nyquist, the notch can only operate at up to half of the sample rate. And in the case of the PIDs, the sample rate is um, 800 hertz on this copter, but obviously the default um, default loop rate is 400 hertz. So on a default setup, the the highest um, frequency that you could uh, run the filter at would be just below 200 hertz, which is very very close to where this is running. And of course, this value here is way off, uh, way above that. So just be aware that there is there are some other advantages in running a faster loop rate. Uh, it allows more sort of efficient filtering of the PIDs in particular. Um, uh, and if you start trying to run your notch at more than half the loop rate, it's not going to work very well at all. Uh, now, I do have a change coming which allows you to run the, um, the loop rate at the same rate as the gyro rate. So on this copter it would be about 4 kilohertz. So that's, um, that's massive. So then all of these filtering concerns go away. But certainly for 4.5, this is the, the, uh, the, the thing to look for. And you can see it's very effective, very effective. I can use these notches if targeted only at the PIDs. Um, 
which uh, is good as well because there can be some sort of phase change going on between the gyro noise and what actually comes through in the pits. Um, and uh, it works very well. So give it a go. Um, let me know in the comments how you get on or if you've got any problems. And thanks for watching.